Come on up. This is Emily Leach, by the way. Hi, again. <laughs> This is a great movement. We love the ignite. It's it's so it's so uh, it's so amazing to watch all this excitement here. And having having put on two TEDx events, I have complete appreciation for the amount of work that they put they you guys put into making this thing happen. Man, and just the excitement that we we get out of coming up here and getting to, to talk to you guys. And how many people in the audience here have spoke at one of these events before? Kudos, yeah. How many other people do we have that are familiar with TED already? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now we know how many TED heads we have in the room, and I'm going to turn it back over to Tim. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, TED stands for Technology, Entertainment, Design. It started back in '86 as a conference centered around these three themes, but over time, it's really broadened and it's gone globally. Fast Company called TED the new way of learning, the new Harvard, and it's been called the most, the most open and yet the most exclusive forum for innovative thought today. And in 2009, TED opened up the opportunity for individuals to come up with independently operated or organized TED events. So we call them TEDx. You've probably heard of TEDx ABQ. At least about 20 of you have. And so by the ten, within two, 2010, we had almost 1,000 different TEDx events across the world. From TEDx Athens to TEDx Kibera, which was actually put on in the world's largest slum of all places. So, for instance, this guy up here, this is Kibera, uh, TEDx Kibera, and it just shows the spirit of humanity, that no matter how hard it gets or how difficult life is, we all have something and an idea we're sharing. And everybody has a TED story. To me, that TED story took place a couple years ago when a friend of mine emailed me this talk by Dan Gilbert. The talk was about human happiness and how we as humans have kind of this baseline of happiness. This was shortly after my mother passed away from breast cancer, and it was a very difficult time for me and my four sisters. That talk gave me a lot of comfort that no matter how bad things were, one day I would be happy again. I took a lot, took a lot of comfort in that talk, in that idea. And uh, I love the idea that an 18-minute talk had such a huge impact in my life. A couple years later, when TEDx Tamaya came to town, I jumped at the chance to organize it. We had, in September 2009, we had about 200 attendees, 11 great speakers. We had an energy that was palpable, and I was hooked. The next week, I applied for TEDx ABQ, and TED gave me the license. In September 2010, we put on the conference. We opened the doors to a sold-out crowd of 320 attendees. We had 18 amazing speakers. We had a fabulous audience. It was a lot of fun. Our speakers were amazing. Jim Spadaccini from, from Corrales talked about the future of multi-touch technology and what that will do to education. Jeffrey Miller from UNM talked about the evolutionary roots of why we buy things. Rex Young of the Mind Research Network spoke about how, how the, the research is happening about on U, at UNM, just a couple miles north of here, and what the brain really does well. The audience was on the edge of their seats and we were just ecstatic. Well, Tim is right. Everybody has their story of how they got introduced to TED or TEDx, and those are absolutely fan fantastic to me and fascinating. So my story was I, I ran across this dude here. Oh, it was you. And later on, we went to this TED.com, and I found the, the talk by Cameron Harold. And believe it or not, it was about entrepreneurship and how, how wonderful it can be to be an entrepreneur and that you don't have to have a Harvard degree or something like that to be really good at it. In fact, he talks about how bipolar is a CEO disease and how it actually helped him become a better entrepreneur. And it really let me know that, hey, you know what? I have those things. I can do this. And by getting involved in TEDx last year, it really helped me see that TEDx was a fantastic experience and I was great, grateful to be a part of it. So we're going to do it again. On September 10, 2011, that's right, 9, 10, 11. TEDxABQ is coming back to New Mexico. We're going to have, uh, tickets will go on sale in July for cheap. More information is <laughs> available on our website. But we need your help. We need passionate people who believe in the, the power of ideas to change attitudes, minds, and ultimately the world. We need your help to find the most inspired ideas in New Mexico and bring them to the stage on 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to help again for my second year. So this will be your third, this will be my second. And we are. We're looking for passionate, passionate people about ideas, about creativity, about innovation. And we just 
want to back up for a second. I'm using it for this. Oh, I also want to just tell you that TEDx ABQ is more than just a presentation or an event that happens once a year. We're a community, a community of people about 100 strong right now on meetup.com that gets together once a month and watches different TED videos, really communicates and talks about how it inspires us, what it does to our lives, and some of the changes that it may have made in us in that very second that we watched the video. And then we also have events that are like what's coming up on March 2nd. Oops, sorry about that. Um, March 2nd in Albuquerque and in Santa Fe. You can come and watch one, one day of the live um, TED event that goes on in California. And it's free. We can't even charge you for it if we wanted to. So go to TEDxABQ, check out where the locations are at, do, get your RSVP, get your seat, and come and visit us. Thank you so much for your time.